my first 20 to 30 hours spent in Warframe, to be frank with you, I didn't know if I was coming or going, or if I was making any progress. The only sign of progress I had was my mastery rank. While information was coming at me from all sides, I didn't feel like I was understanding much of anything. Simply because Warframe can be accused of many things, but not that it's new player friendly. Now granted, over the years it has gotten better, but the modding system is still rather abrasive to new players. Today, using the legendary fan favorite Hex Shotgun as a platform, we're going to deep dive into a full modding guide. To be very clear, this is aimed at newer players seeking to learn how Warframe, you know, works. So if that's what you're after and you want to learn, then you came to the right place. If you are more the veteran type though, then this can serve as a refresher course on weapon modding, mechanics, synergies, and not only. The heck is obtained from the market. Simply walk up to it and type in H-E-K and there you have it, your heck shotgun. In order to get the blueprint, you will have to pay 25,000 credits. And if that seems like a lot to you right now, trust me, it's really not. But you should keep an eye on all the resources that you need to actually build the heck. New rod circuit, salvage, and a bit of rubedo. When you actually start building the head, you might be tempted to do the following. Oh, I'm just gonna brush the build. I do have that 25 starting plat. Do not use your starting plat to rush anything. Keep it because you will need it for more important things like catalysts, reactors, etc. As soon as you get the heck, it's gonna be looking something like this. Mod capacity, a very limiting 30 out of 30. Just a couple of hydrate mods and that's it, making for not a very effective build. What you need to do to max out the weapon is twofold. Number one, jump into actions and install the Orkin Catalyst. You can farm this one by doing sorties or from Nightwave. It's essential to maxing out any weapon in Warframe. After you got yourself an Orkin Catalyst, max out the weapon to rank 30, then jump into actions and polarize the slot or add a Forma. This will allow you to limit the drain of these high ranking mods. This heck has been format 9 times, indicated by the number next to the little star. Now, I don't mean to scare you, for the weapon build we're recommending to the free forma will be plenty to get you started. In order to do that, you will need a rank 30 heck, jump into actions, and install by polarizing with a forma. If you don't have formats, usually the blueprints for formats are obtained by cracking relics. There's gonna be plenty of them. So as soon as you crack a relic open and there's nothing more enticing and there's a forma blueprint there, go for that forma blueprint. All veterans will tell you, you always need to be cooking a forma in your foundry because we use hundreds of the things. The polarity should be chosen in accordance with your mods. Look through your mods. What mods do you plan to use on the build and simply forma for the highest drain mods? For example, look at Hell's Chamber. This is a must if you don't have galvanized hell on most builds. If I'm gonna be using this one over a matching slot, it's gonna be draining half that 15 amount rounded up. So it's not gonna be 7.5, it's gonna be 8. But if I use a mod over a non-matching slot, for example, Galvanize Savvy, oh, that drain went up from 12 to 15. Use it over a matching slot and boom, it's gonna be draining half that rounded up. If you're gonna be using it over a non-polarized slot, it's just gonna be draining the stated amount. The heck is a classic shotgun experience. That means you point, you shoot, and you win. But tell me, my friends, what do we do with shotguns? Do we sniper rifle shotguns? Well, in, in Warframe, you, you kind of do with the right mods, but that's not the point. The point is, this one fires seven pellets by default in a pretty wide spread. You see, the accuracy does matter in Warframe because if half your pellets are in the wall and not in the target, you're simply not going to be getting all the damage out of the weapon. So it's important to bear in mind. Not only that, a lot of weapons in Warframe also have damage falloff. That means they're only fully effective at a certain range. For the heck, the damage falloff starts at 10 meters. That means maximum damage to your target is gonna be within 10 meters without any additional mod. Fire rate of 2.17, which isn't all that fantastic. Again, it's a semi-automatic trigger, but the multi-shot is. Seven pellets by default. Look at this stat, remember it, and love it, because this is the best thing on 98% of ranged weapons. If you're ever wondering to yourself, what is the first stat I should go for? It's multi-shot. Allow me to explain why that is. Now, at a base value of 7, we're going to be multiplying that with mods such as Hell's Chamber 120%. Now, I got 15.4 pellets shooting at my target with each and every single shot. And you might be curious. Hold on there, Lazar. 15.4, so we're going to take a pellet and like, cut like 60% of it, throw away, and then just chuck it at the target? No. The way that one works, every single shot, you're going to be getting 15 pellets guaranteed into your target. Or the walls and a 40% chance at a 16 pellet per shot. You get how that one works? Each and every single pellet is gonna be doing this damage. That's why you have damage per projectile. 
and each of those pellets will be having a chance to apply a status to your target. This is one of the reasons that once upon a time, pellet based weapons such as the Heck were extremely powerful. They're still quite powerful today. Magazina 4 which was the bane of my existence growing up as a Tenno. Every single time I thought I had a target and I fired, it went to reload. I died a little bit inside and you will too. Reload time on 2 seconds, ammo maximum 120 and ammo pickups at 15. Keep in mind that these new stat screen, you will have to hover over some of these things to get more explanations. And this is extremely useful when it comes to elementals. For example, dude, I don't know what impact does. I don't know what puncture or slash does. I mean, if I add heat to my gun, what the hell does it actually do? It says heat. Hover over each and every single one and you get the explanations. No longer do you need to go to the wiki and get more information on that. So kudos to the E for that. It only took them like, what? 11 years and i'm not exaggerating fall off between 10 and 20 now we talked about this one a lot of weapons in warframe do have fall off you want to stay within the first number so stay within 10 meters of your target you're going to be getting all of the damage onto your targets this can be increased with the following projectile flight speed fatal acceleration 40 percent projectile flight speed now hold on there laser that attack look hit scan what do you mean projectile in Warframe, you have multiple types of attacks. You have a projectile that will slowly move to your targets, or you have instant or hit scan damage. That is the same as in Counter-Strike, let's say. Yes, you point, you shoot, and theoretically you win. But even with a hit scan attack, such as the Heck has, you do have projectile flight speed. Because here's the thing, it's not instant damage in Warframe. It's just a really, really, really quick projectile that you can't really notice. So projectile flight speed still helps with the fall off. So it takes it from 10 to 20 to 14 to 28. Ribbons in Warframe is still a polarizing subject. Initially, they were introduced into the game as a tool to balance out weapons. I'm not sure that really worked out all that well, but the idea is kind of like this. The more powerful a weapon is, the more popular it will be, and the lower the Riven disposition. The less powerful a weapon is, the less it's used, therefore the less popular that weapon is, and the higher the Riven disposition. It's basically inverse proportional with the popularity of that weapon. However, that Riven disposition is controlled manually by the developer. It's not automatic, and they choose to update it whenever they feel like it, unfortunately. We haven't really had consistent Riven disposition updates for more than like a year. So you see, those little balls controls the fate of certain weapons. For example, this is a Riven mod for the heck. The stats that you see on it, critical chance and critical damage, are down to luck. Not the values. The values are down to the disposition. The higher the disposition, the more balls, the higher the values. But the stats themselves are down to RNG. You need to roll these ribbons using Kuva. And if you're lucky, you can get the right stats. And if you're unlucky, you can roll a ribbon a thousand times and still not get the stats that you're looking for. For example, I would love some multi-shot on this one. Like we talked about before, multi-shot, the best thing on everything. I won't recommend as a new player you to go out there and chase down ribbons. If you really must get the most you can out of the weapon and the weapon has at least a dispo 2 or 3 out of 5, then yes, it is definitely worth using ribbons. And some ribbons also enable very specific cookie cutter builds. More on that some other time. Critical chance and critical damage, I'm assuming these are self-explained, but keep in mind that in Warframe you have an infinite number of critical tiers. Tier 1 is yellow, tier 2 is orange, and tier 3 is red, but tier 4 is also red. 5 is red, 6 is red, 7 is... you get where I'm going with this one. Apparently, they ran out of colors after they got red. There is a real benefit going over 100% critical chance in Warframe. Not just the pretty colors and dopamine, but also an actual damage benefit. And the critical multiplier, which I believe is self-explained. Status per projectile. Now, this one is amazing. You're going to be applying status effects to your targets, but which status effect will be applying is it gonna be impact puncture with the extra crit thing slash with the damage over time can i have slash all the time please because look my weapon has slash in the past we had to run math to see the elemental weight or the proc priority nowadays all you gotta do is hover over status per projectile and you get to see the actual percentage i shit you not it took them 11 years to do this but hey kudos for you guys so for example let's say i want heat because it's hot 60% status chance and 60% heat with Scattering Inferno. This changes everything, but once again, all I gotta do is hover and see exactly what are the chances for these to proc. Bear in mind that a weapon that doesn't have the IPS types, that's the physical types, Impact, Puncture, and Slash, you cannot add an IPS type to it. So for example, like I can add heat to this one. If it didn't have Impact, if I were to add an Impact mod, 
such as full contact, it would have not added impact if it was zero. It only can add if it already has the physical type. Okay, we're done with the stat screen. Is your brain frazzled yet? No? Well, I'm just getting started. Let's mod the actual weapon. One of the first things that you should put on a weapon is a little bit of flat damage. Now, you don't need a hundred sources of flat damage. Just one or two ought to do it. And damage is point blank for shotguns. This is the most common mod. It only takes five little balls to max out. So not a whole lot of endo, 90% damage. This will be increasing all the physical types and the elemental types on the weapon. So for example, if I was to add my heat from earlier, it also is going to be getting increased by point blank. Have a look, 85.5. If I take this one off, we're going to go back to uh, 45 so flat damage on weapons is instrumental you don't need a thousand extra damage it doesn't mean that it's gonna just automatically make the weapon better but you do need some and here's the general rule the most powerful weapons in warframe are the ones that can access all if not all then most of the multipliers flat damage just being one of them back to elementals though let's say i want to add some electricity because on my weapon i want to have electricity and heat so because you know Electricity is and stuff. We're going to be adding shell shock and... Oh, what happened there? Instead of having heat and electricity, I wound up having radiation. Radiation is an elemental combo. The elemental combo of heat and electricity. Now, you might be wondering, hold on, is there any way for me to have electricity on the weapon now? What you can do is take off the heat or make the heat combine with a different element. Let's say I'm gonna get a little toxin and I want the toxin to combine with the heat. Wait, that doesn't work that way. I didn't want toxin, I wanted to have the electricity. Why do I have radiation and toxin? Because the elemental combos will always combine from top left to bottom right. So if I want the heat to combine with the toxin, what do I need to do? Make sure that shell shock is not in front of toxic barrage, boom. And now heat is combining with toxic, forming gas on the weapon, which is fantastic versus the corpus faction. More on that some other time. Now bear in mind that some weapons in Warframe will be having a default elemental. That default elemental will be treated as a very last mod. Think of it as a invisible element that you can see right over here and it will be the last one to combine. When it comes to elemental combination, there's also one additional rule. I'm not even sure I should tell you about this one. It's called H C. E P Harrow chassis every time. Apparently, if two elementals are on the same priority level, let's say if there was a way for heat and electricity to be in the same priority spot, the order in which they combine will be followed by H C E P. You get what that stands for, right? Heat, cold, electricity, and toxic. Now, this rule is very obscure and doesn't pop up in Warframe all that much, more to Nemesis weapons and even then very, very rarely, so you don't really need to worry about it all that much, just something to bear in mind. Back to the build though, I got my flat damage, but what should I be putting on it next? Oh, I know, what was that best thing on everything thing? Multi-shot, and you should put all of it on. Hell Chamber, and additionally, optionally, you can put Vigilante Armament, 60% multi-shot, pushing your multi-shot to 19.6. Next, we gotta decide, am I going for crit or am I not going for crit? Speaking of crit though, did you notice something about it? Did you? 5% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. This is a set bonus. It's a fantastic set bonus to have, but please don't base your decision on the Vigilante mods on the set alone. There's another trick that you should know in Warframe. A lot of veterans use this on their Sentinel's weapon just to get the bonus out of the set. And yes, it does work, which is fantastic. Back to crit though, you see on the heck there's a bit of an issue, remember? Of course you do. The base critical chance is kind of not great at 10%, so if I was the mod for crit, Blunderbuss, which has been sucking in Warframe since 2015, only 90% critical chance, that's just simply not a whole lot. My critical chance only goes to 19%, and the developer refuses to give us a prime variant because <laughs> it would be too powerful. <laughs> Anyway, there is one more option. It's called Critical Deceleration 200% Critical Chance. Fantastic, 30% Crit Chance. Hey, that's not so bad. Kinda. But you also get minus 20% fire rate. Am I seeing that right? Yes. Critical Deceleration is a corrupted mod. It gives you a big chunk of something. <laughs> we do like a... Not important, but it also takes away a bit of something. Minus 20% fire rate. There's a lot of corrupted mods in Warframe and their meta on weapon builds, Warframe builds, etc. You gotta get the farming. And if you don't know how to do vault runs, which is where you get the corrupted mods, I got your back. Link in the cards right now for a full and detailed guide. 
Here's an additional tip as well. You can make a couple of black by selling these corrupted mods because again, they are a must have in Warframe. They're not the only ones. Have you noticed or heard of nightmare mods? Let me show you a good example for shotguns. This one is called Blaze. You can also buy this one, just like you can buy Critical Deceleration, but you can farm it. 60% damage, just like Point Blank, but also 60% heat. Heat nowadays in Warframe is one of the most powerful single elementals in the game, so Blaze is definitely a must-have in your collection. Nightmare missions in Warframe are honestly nightmare in name only, but if you find them too challenging, again, you can just simply buy the mod. I got myself my critical chance, but what about critical damage? Because critical chance without critical damage is entirely pointless. You can use the mod code RAVAGE. 60% critical damage and just like Blunderbuss, it also sucks and has been sucking for a very, very long time. It's an expert at it. But for this one, you at least have a prime variant 110% critical damage. Where do I get these prime variants? I want them. Slow down there. Before getting prime variants, you should definitely go and farm your corrupted mods first and your nightmare mods. Now, the prime variants can be bought from the trade chat, but there's a 1 million credit tax, and don't worry about the credits. You can easily get them by doing index or orb hunts or railjack. Link the cards right now on a guide on how to get credits. But before you get the prime mods, make sure you have all your bases covered. Prime mods are brought by Battle Kitty the Void Trader every two weeks, and his inventory is randomized, so you might be lucky or unlucky if you want to know all the updates on battle and everything that he brings make sure to subscribe a more realistic and cheap alternative to prime ravage is gonna be shrapnel shot on kill 99 critical damage so almost as much as prime ravage but when aiming for nine seconds and this might seem a little bit limiting but honestly in warframe you're gonna be doing a whole lot of aiming with your ranged weapons anyway and it's a horde shooter kills upon kills normally shrapnel shot should be up all the time during your missions depending on your mission if you're gonna be doing something like a boss fight then well shrapnel shot might let you down so you might want to swap it out for the standard ravage next we're gonna be doing one of the most classic and effective combinations in warframe vital slash with the help of hunter munitions hunter munitions is a mod that you must have in your inventory any primary weapon that can somewhat crit can benefit greatly from hunter munitions 30 percent chance to apply a slash on critical and a set bonus as well slash is still the most desirable because it puts a damage over time on your target that doesn't care about the target's defenses if you want to know more about hunter munitions because just talking about this mod is like a 10 15 minute conversation link of the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on hunter munitions faction modifiers double dipping etc for the time being we're gonna go with it as for the vital elemental combo, if you don't know how to make it or if you don't know how to make any combo in Warframe, all you gotta do is simply type in the combo and the mods will pop up. We're gonna be using the 6060 mods, Toxic Barrage and Frigid Blast. Toxic Barrage farm from Corrupted Vore in the Void or about 10 plats from the PC trade chat. Frigid Blast by doing spy missions or from the trade chat at about 10 plat a piece. These two together will be forming the vital elemental combo. We need this on our targets to get more damage out of the slashes generated by Hunter Munitions. The build that you see right now is one of the most common primary builds in Warframe. It works on mostly anything as long as your weapon can crit. In my opinion, it is not optimal to be used on the heck. Why? Your critical chance is only 13%. And there are effects that can get that critical chance higher. Not through modding, but through obtaining outside buffs. We're going to be talking about those just a tad later. We're well, going to be spawning in the battle group for each relevant faction level 15 North Steel Path modifiers. This should be a pretty decent test. Now what you gotta understand that Warframe does have zonal multipliers, so body shot, it's not gonna be doing the same as a headshot. Take a look at the values <laughs> on that one. You're also noticing something, I'm guessing. Look at that, a single number on that target, but on this target, there was like five or six numbers. Why is that? Like I stated before, hitscan in Warframe is not really hitscan, as two bullets cannot coexist in the exact same point in time. They essentially have slightly different trajectories, which means which means they're going to be reaching the target at different times. If one or two bullets are more than plenty to absolutely execute a single target, the rest will simply not make contact. Even though with each and every single shot, I have all the multi-shot in the world. You can easily test this by going headshot versus body shot on a more tougher target. Speaking about tougher targets, heavy goons usually have a whole lot more HP thanks to their armor. You can tell by the orange health bar that they have and the little shield symbol at the end of their hell sweetheart sweetie yes yeah, sweetheart let's let daddy work a little okay just a minute 
If I'm gonna hit this corrupt, uh, heavy goon non-corrupted, I'm gonna get myself slashes and viral. Viral from the 60s we made, and of course those two slashes come in from Hunter Munitions. So even though the contact damage didn't kill that target, it's still a one-shot thanks to the damage over time. The higher the level of the enemies, the more often you will see this effect. Four slashes, three viral, absolutely annihilating the bomb one. So you'll have no issue with the Grenier. What about the Corpus though? What is different about the Corpus? Well, you know, only everything. Normally the crewmen are easiest to take out and as before you should definitely go for a headshot. If you want to know more about zone multipliers, link the cards right now. Again, it's a 15 minute conversation so it's best to tackle that guy separately. When you get to the MOAs, you might be tempted to believe that this gun looking thing is their head. It's not, it's the gun. So you want to shoot them in this thing that looks like a fanny pouch. You see they have those two little beady yellow eyes. That's the actual head, the MOA. It died to damage over time, but again, if you want the headshot, that's where you want to hit the MOA. Did you see all those damage numbers? That's all your beautiful and fantastic multi shot making contact with your enemy. And as before, it will be no problem absolutely executing the corpus without much issue. Those shields can regenerate, but currently not fast enough to make a difference. We do know that D will change that so the shields are more relevant to their survivability. There's one more major faction and that's gonna be the infested. Now here's the deal about the infested. Treat them as the zerg. Individually, they're extremely weak, but as a group, well, there's a lot of them and they tend to swarm you with their numbers. Not only that, they can buff each other quite nicely. Take a look at this infested right here, this crawler. If I hit him, oh my god, what happened? No damage whatsoever. Over that health, there's a blue-ish, a light blue bar or a white bar, depending on your color settings. That's Overguard. He's being protected right now. If he didn't have that protection like this crawler right here, well, then, well, <laughs> two pellets were enough to completely annihilate that target. But what's going on? You see, there's a visual effect and they're all being protected. By who? by their elite units, like these ancient healers. If I'm to take these out, like so, then the overguard is gone and the enemies once again are rather easy to kill in a single one shot, body shot or head shot, because yes, it is awfully difficult to find the head on this former cow. It's not actually a former cow, apparently it's a former green, but I still think they're cows. So there you go. We had a philosophical debate about this one. And if you're interested, you, you really want to find Link the cards right now. I'm going to be using this opportunity to talk to you about a very, very important stat. You see, I'm one-shotting those targets quite easily. But my problem is, there's a lot of them, like I talked about in the case of the Infested. They're going to swarm me with their numbers. This is a single target weapon. What can I do? Punch through. Punch through is an absolutely amazing stat and it will take your weapon from single target to not AoE, pseudo AoE, multi-target let's say. There are a couple of fantastic punch through mods. Seeking Fury for example, 15% reload and 1.2 meters worth of punch through. Once upon a time, the meta mod on the Tigris Prime. Ah, the Tigris Prime. Where was I? Anyway, we're going to be using Seeking Force for this demonstration, but I also recommend Vigilante Offense, 1.5 meters worth of punch through. I know it doesn't say meters. It's meters, trust me. And you get that 5% chance when it has critical hits from primary weapons. That set bonus that we already talked about in the case of Vigilante Armaments. Seeking Force gives you 2.1, so for this demonstration, it's gonna be ideal. Same targets, we're not gonna respawn, so give me a line. One, two, three in a line. I'm just gonna duck, aim carefully, and... <laughs> One, two, three with a single shot, but of course... I can only aim down here, which means these guys will remain alive. How can I fix this? Warframe synergies. Introducing Monsieur Nidus. And Monsieur Nidus is an absolutely amazing Warframe, because if you say anything bad about them, half the Warframe community will jump at your throat. It doesn't matter that his gameplay loop is extremely boring. Everybody loves him, or most people love him, including me. I mean, take a look at the fashion. His second ability is Larva, and it clumps everybody together. And now me and my punch crew are ready to go to completely annihilate the entire group of enemies without much effort. Now granted, not everybody died, but still, there's your pseudo AoE. Punch crew plus a clump up ability equals awesome in Warframe. Now what follows next is not necessarily aimed at the veteran player, it's just an example of what you can do theoretically, even with a low MR weapon such as the Heck, when you know exactly what you're doing, what you're shooting, and you have all the necessary resources. It's gonna be looking something like this. 
We got ourselves that Fantastic Riven, we already talked about that one. Galvanized Hell, which is simply straight up better than the normal version, and no, the two cannot coexist on the same build. Galvanized Savvy. Now we're gonna have to pause on this one because this is one of the most inconsistent, poorly designed, and just flat out confusing effects in the game. Normally, it would make sense. 80% status chance, and separate from that, so you're getting the 80% regardless. 40% direct damage per status type affecting the target for 20 seconds, stacks up two times. Well, if I'm reading this one correctly, since that's the only info I have to go off of, the more status procs on my target when I hit with this one, the more damage am I gonna be getting out of it. But what kind of damage? It says direct damage. Normally, this one works like a flat damage increase, in the same way that Point Blank worked for our earlier build. Or you can use Prime Point Blank as an example as well. But sometimes, the damage effect from Galvanized Savvy is multiplicative instead of being additive to point blank. That's a whole different ball game of damage. It can make damage numbers go sky high, obviously. Multiplicative instead of additive. So what's the problem? The problem is there's no indication of that. You have no idea how Galvanized Savvy actually works. There is no indication or the mod or anywhere else in the modding screen how it will affect the weapon. Not only the weapon, but sometimes it's multiplicative only to specific fire modes of specific weapons. So it's up to the player to scour the websites, maybe the wiki, maybe check out a guide or do some individual testing to find out how Galvanized Savvy's damage component actually affects the weapon and its fire modes. And even then, the testing numbers might be inconclusive. Why exactly does a player need to do all that and why is the effect of Galvanized Savvy being hidden from the player? There is no clear indication of how this mod actually works on each and every individual weapon. And believe it or not, this is not the worst offender of the inconsistent design. For example, there are mods that can be equipped on weapons and do nothing. <laughs> nothing of the stated effect. And there are mods that should be able to be equipped on certain weapons and they just don't show up in the modding screen. That is the way they balanced it out, in the sense that just they made it unavailable for specific weapons. The problem with things like this is the fact that it's going to be extremely confusing to newer players or players seeking to understand how Warframe works. That's why you can't. That's why you always got to test your numbers because there's a lot, and I mean a lot, of inconsistencies in Warframe. Now, speaking about terrible design choices, faction mods. Prime Cleanse Corrupted. Essentially, this is going to be good only versus the Corrupted Faction. The Corrupted Faction are basically the other faction pumped up for the most part, and normally they have been the benchmark for testing. Nowadays we fight more to murmur, but that's a topic for another time. These faction mods, however, for damage over time builds such as the one we're using right now are extremely, extremely important and you should not forget about them completely. If you're not going to be using them out of spite because you know they're a terrible design choice, fine, but you need to understand how they work. I went into detail how faction modifiers double dip in the Hunter Munitions guide I already linked you in the card. Now let's talk about the Exilus slot or the Arcane slot. You should treat this one as an additional mod slot because by all intents and purposes, that's what Arcanes are. One more layer of modification in a different flavor, if you will. If you're more of a newer player, leave this one locked for the time being until you actually get yourself some decent Arcanes. For example, Merciless. This is the most commonly used one. There's a bunch of flat damage and at least this one works exactly the way that it says. 30% reload speed and a bunch of flat damage as well. This time we're gonna be going with Shotgun Vendetta because multi shot, my friends, because multi shot. I will have to stay within 5 meters to get a kill though. For the excellent slot of the weapon, what some Tenno would recommend is Galvanized Acceleration, what we talked about earlier. Remember, more projectile flight speed, better fall off on your weapon. But I'm gonna be nice, close, and personal to my targets anyway. What I prefer using, and this is strictly personal preference because it's mostly usability, the Baron Arrow narrow battle 30 percent accuracy when aiming for nine seconds i guarantee you there's not a whole lot of tenno using this because most tenno simply don't see the fact that they are wasting a lot of their pellets into walls the ground the clouds whatever else losing a whole lot of damage this one allows me more pellets into my targets and less on the walls and also obviously minus recall would also be a good idea let me show you what this build can do it has one problem though. Did you notice what it doesn't have? I said I'm going for Slash and Slash needs what? Vital damage. I'm going to be getting vital damage from an outside source because you can and because when you're fighting high level content, you definitely should. An example to get um, vital from an outside source would be 
Grendel's Nourish. Grendel's Nourish will be made available to you through the helmet system that you will unlock when you get to Deimos. And I can simply replace any ability on any Warframe and slap in Nourish, which is what we're going to be doing now. Nourish is going to be offering me Vital and Energy as well. We're also going to be using Arcane Avenger. This is important for a lot of weapons that suck on crit. Like? Uh, like the heck. 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. And you might say, oh, who cares? I mean, it's only 45%, your base is still 10. Nah. This is a bonus additive after effect, simply stacking on top of what you already have. So if your weapon has 0% critical chance, with this one, it goes to 45. It has 10% critical chance, with this one, it goes to 55. You get how that one works. It's an absolutely amazing aggressive arcane, and you should definitely farm this one as well. But again, I'm pausing the target so they can hit me and I can get my glory. It's absolutely glorious buffs. But my friends, we're not gonna spawn, what, level 50s, please. We're gonna go as high as we can, level 205. We're gonna be unpausing the targets and we're gonna be spawning the Orokin Battle Group. Now let's see what happens. Can I actually do higher level content with the amazing tech? And of course, this is the stomp thing that's me activating Nourish. Yes, my friends, those are one shots on level 200s. Look at the values, look at the values, values are beautiful, reload is quick. But let's hit a corrupted heavy goon, something a bit more tougher, right in its freaking head. Look at the values of the slash, 40,000 and now dead. With a build such as this, you can easily hit half a million as a slash value, 285 there. This one contact damage death, I'm trying not to get contact damage death, 336 over there. And believe it or not, this is not even as high as the heck can go. But one more Corrupted Heavy Goon right in the head. 191,000. One shot. No problem whatsoever. Enter a Sentinel. The best primer in the game is going to be the Diriga. Remember we talked about Galvanized Savvy, Galvanized Shot, and Galvanized Aptitude? Because they all have basically the same problem. We're going to be using the Diriga, which is one of the best primers in the game, together with Hellstrom to prime our targets with as many statuses as we want, or the statuses that we want, better said, if you want to proc something specific. In our case, I'm going to be making the Hellstrom proc some cold procs. Why? That doesn't make any sense. Well, there's a specific arcane that I can use on my Hex shotgun called Frostbite. It's actually for primary, so you can use it on shotguns, you can use it on rifles as well. Check this one out. Critical damage and multi-shot for 12 seconds. Now, normally critical damage wouldn't really be worth unless, of course, I got Avenger. 45% with a 40% from the build, 85%. And now, it's definitely worth it. With a build such as this, your slash values can go over 1.4 million. Oh, that's the guy of 1.266 mil. Unfortunately, I'm killing them on contact, so I can't show you the full slash value. I didn't account for that. But the point is, my friends, this is the lowly heck. Quote unquote, the lowly heck. This is an introductory level weapon. If your goal is to take weapons such as this to high level content, rest assured that you can. You see, my friends, Warframe is not about skill, <laughs> hardly. Warframe is about knowledge and accumulation. If you got all the necessary resources and the necessary knowledge to mod your Warframes, your weapons, your companions, essentially everything, there's really nothing you can do with mostly anything. And then again, there's the stud. And believe it or not, you can take this even further. But a one-shot is a one-shot is a one-shot. How much more of a one-shot do you want your one-shot to be? Then again, a wise man once said, there's no kill like overkill. As always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, 1.14 mil, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm fully aware I may not be perfect, so the way that I explain things might not light up the ball for everybody. So if you got any questions, again, in the comment section down below. If I can't get to them, I'm sure this fantastic community will. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Oh, you can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye. Now stand still. Can't hit moving targets. I'm a warframe boy. One point six mil, I got him! I got a voice! I got him! How did I tell you? What did I tell you?